Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 24 through 30. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in the gathering the weeds you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first. And bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. May God add a blessing to the reading of the Holy Scriptures. Will you pray with me? Lord God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Good morning. It is good to be here today. I really, really want to pull some weeds. Let me tell you what I mean by that. We have yet another parable here from Jesus that deals with agricultural images. And we have an explanation uh, in this chapter. Later on in this chapter, we have an explanation um, that... uh, Is my microphone cutting off and on? Yeah, we're not going to do that anymore. I'm just going to yell out. Okay, so we have an explanation later on in this chapter. We've got an explanation that was given to us by Matthew. And remember I said last week that if you see an explanation with a parable, it's usually the work of the gospel author. It's usually the work of a community trying to wrestle with the parable. So the field The field is not the whole world here. That's not how I interpret this parable. The field in this parable is the Christian movement as a whole. The churches from the start of Jesus' time until now, that's how I understand the field. And the wheat are the ones who uh, follow Christ and bring forth the kingdom. The weeds are the ones who do awful things in the name of Christ. Now, this field, again, does not represent all of the evil in the world. And we're just talking about the ones who claim to be followers of Christ. All throughout the history of the Christian church, the church is responsible for awful, awful things. The church has been used to legitimize evil rulers. The church has been used to condemn anyone without money. The church has been used to wage war on millions and millions. And if you think that the church is done with its reign of awfulness, please think again. Look at the damage done in the name of Jesus uh, in churches that uh, have, have marginalized the LGBTQ community. Look at the damage being done there. Look at the overt sexism of not allowing women in leadership positions or in the clergy in lots of denominations. And if you are listening for the church to speak out against systemic racism or vast inequality or the waste of resources while millions go hungry, you will be hearing mostly silence. But the aspect that gets my blood boiling The one that gets me every single time is when the church is used for hateful purposes disguised as love. That's the worst. That's the absolute worst. The rampant intolerance within a community that is supposed to be based in love is not only wrong, it is evil. I'll say it again. The rampant intolerance of a community, a faith community, is not simply wrong. It is evil. But it's done in such a way. 
It's done in such a way that makes those Christians feel like they are standing up for what is right. That is the part that blows my mind. How can it be right? How can it be right to hurt that many of God's children? So yes, I tell you again, I really, really want to pull some weeds. I don't want them in our field anymore. I don't want to play with them any longer if they're going to have that much hate in their heart in the name of the one who stood for peace. Evil certainly exists. I think no one would argue that. Evil exists. That's uh, Bad things happen. And evil will exist in our field as well. There's a lot of hurt and frustration that we would like to do something about, but we don't seem to be able to. So a common question is why? Why would God allow evil, especially in the field? Why would God allow that? Can't God do something about the evil? That's at least in our field. Can't you do something about this, God? What would be the purpose of God if not to eliminate evil in our field? But one of the problems that that line of questioning leads us to is that it creates an us versus them mentality. We have this tendency in our culture to divide into one camp or another. And I don't know if it's been going on since the dawn of time. My thought is it probably has been. But especially now in our current context and in our current culture, we have a tendency to pick one side and demonize the other. We see it all the time. We see it in movies, the good versus evil. We definitely see it in politics. We have our side and we demonize the other side. We see it in major cultural issues when people not just disagree, but violently disagree and make the other person their enemy. But a great example of this, I think, is in the world of sports. In the world of sports, we know who the enemy is. A college football Saturday makes neighbors into enemies. Families turn against one another during the game. Social politeness and niceties go out the window when your team is involved. And as an Arkansas fan, living in enemy territory here, I certainly understand this. And I'm quite certain that the Oklahoma State fans out there understand this all too well. Now, for you OU fans, you may not have understood what I was saying. So that's okay, I'll go back over it slower so you can keep up. <laughs> that feels good to say right there. <laughs> but seriously, the enemy is clear when we are talking about sports, right? We've got a clip we're fixing to show you. It is a commercial that ESPN aired like 10 years ago. And it involved one of the biggest rivalries currently in college football, the Michigan Wolverines and the Ohio State Buckeyes. Massive rivalry between these two. And in this clip, these two people that are in the car, um, they're on a blind date, right? So they don't really know each other. They're getting to know each other in the car here. So let's play our YouTube clip here. Oh, have you been on a lot of blind dates? Um, well, this would make one. Oh, <laughs> yeah. me too. What do you do? I'm a vet. I love animals. Really? Yeah. Where are you from? Michigan. Born and raised. Go blue. Go Buckeyes! Go Buckeyes! <laughs> it's genius. I love that commercial. I mean, it's very silly, I think, right? But it's a good example of how we treat others who do not share our views. And getting back to a church conversation, I want to do this. I want to jump out of a moving car when faced with hatefulness disguised as love by uh, the intolerance of some or even most Christians, by the people causing pain and sorrow and discord all in the name of Jesus. When I look at the state of the church and the pain that it has caused and continues 
to cause. I'm convinced beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is not what God had in mind. The abuse and the pain is not part of God's plan, and it certainly is not part of God's design. So I feel like the servant in this parable. I feel like the servant in this parable asking the master if he can go pull the weeds. Please, God, please let me pull these weeds. If not all of them, then maybe the really bad ones. I want to pull the weeds because serious damage is being done and the hurt and abuse continues to mount up. So please, oh please, Let me pull some weeds. But Jesus has a different plan in mind. The response in this parable from the master was, no. No, you cannot pull the weeds. Because you would uproot the wheat along with them. We have a flower bed in our home. And we have this one spot that can, we, had, we had this one spot that continued to plague me. It tasked me. It, it enveloped the plant with weeds constantly. And I was constantly out there trying to pull the weeds. And I would make it look nice and neat. And then a couple of weeks later, the weeds are back simply around this one plant. So one, one time I had it, about a year ago, I'd had it. And I go, all right, the plant has to go. Because I've got to get these weeds. So I uprooted the plant and I got the weeds. I mean, I dug and I pulled deep and I got the weeds out of there. It felt glorious. Now do you know what's there? It's a hole where the plant used to be with weeds all over the place. I didn't eliminate the weeds. All I did was uproot something that was good in our flower bed. By trying to remove the weeds, aren't we doing the very same thing that created division in the first place. Isn't that just me deciding who gets to play in our field and who doesn't? That's not what God wants. If God wanted that, God would have put me in charge. God didn't. The God we get to glimpse in this parable has infinite patience. And that frees us. That frees us from deciding who is in and who is out. And it allows us to get to the real matter of our faith. And that is loving. Loving to the extreme. Our presence in this world as Christians is not about a full-blown plan to get rid of evil at every turn. Our presence in the world as Christians is to be the good. I'm going to say it again. Our presence in this world as Christians is to simply be the good, to live the gospel, to be the salt, to be the light, to be the good in the world when you know you will have resistance, to be the light when darkness will indeed try to snuff us out. So I was talking with a group of ministers about this very passage And the question came up, so what are we supposed to do then? If we can't uproot the weeds, what are we supposed to do? Just stay silent about injustice? Of course not. That's not what this parable is about. This parable says nothing about naming the weeds. We can and should call a weed a weed. When there is injustice, our voice needs to be the one calling it out. And when there is evil, it needs to be our voice the world Hears. It's, n- it's just not up to us to uproot those weeds. That is up to God. Jesus called out injustice. Jesus did this. But Jesus didn't uproot anyone. In fact, if you want an example of supreme evil at its finest, look to the cross. Because the weeds got their way. And he was executed as a criminal of the state. So in the cross, we get to see what supreme evil can do. And yet, if you read on in continuing the story, we see that it was not strong enough to defeat God's love. So what is it that we need to do? As followers of Christ who are wheat, what is it that we need to do? When we encounter a weed, our love has to be louder than their hate. 
when we see hate masquerading as truth, then our love has to be louder. And when we look around and we see weeds everywhere, our love has to be louder. When we survey the state of the world and the brokenness that we see all around us, it just means we have to up our game. Evil is quite powerful, but my God is more powerful still. Praise be to that God. Amen.